Hey everyone, it's Bobby from Decoding here, and today I'm going to show you how to use ChatGPT in a Django app. Let's jump straight into it. Okay, before I jump into it, if you can just subscribe and click the bell so you're notified every time I add a video to the channel, and also if you can just like and comment on this video as it helps me grow the channel. So, chat gbt it's had a lot of press recently there's a lot of people that like it a lot of people that dislike it i myself as a developer i find it a very very useful tool and today i'm going to show you how to use chat gbt in a django app there's not many tutorials out there so i thought it's about time that i put one together so if you see look at my screen here you can see i've got vs code open now i'm going to show you an extension that you can use in vs code that allows you to interact with chat gpt rather than having to go into the ui so before i do that actually let's let me just show you the ui quickly so um links to all of this in the description below so you can try chat gpt you need to log in uh, and once you're in and you're logged in you can ask any questions so what is a dog Okay, and it'll think about it for a second and it will just give you like a paragraph of, uh, you know, what a dog is. Uh, but what's really, really good about ChatGPT is it will remember your input and the output and then you can actually um, almost communicate with ChatGPT to, um, let's say, refactor the response or simplify it. So can you simplify this? And say yeah and I'll say of course I can and then it will simplify that paragraph so that's what I really like about it it you know the first response um, for instance if you're searching in Google you know it's just very you give it an input it gives you an output or it gives you a list of um, websites that you can view images and what have you ChatGPT is a little bit deeper than that obviously so you can actually communicate with it and get exactly what you're looking for so this is the UI um, it does have an API and that's what we're going to need to use to wire it up to a Django app and VS Code so there's a link in the description that will take you to their documentation page. And once you're logged in, you can click into personal, you click in a view API keys, and you can create a new secret key. Okay. Um, there you go. You'd copy that and you're going to need that for the project. But uh, I will revoke that key. And also I'll revoke this one here because I don't use it. But I've got one that I've got in the app already. So you need to get an API key to do this. Back in the VS Code. So if you go into extensions and you can see here, chat GPT, this is the one I've installed. You need to install that and you'll need a login. Once you've got the extension in, you can then go onto here, click in the chat GPT. It'll ask you to log in and it'll ask you to give your API key. Once you put your API key in there, you can just ask um, what is divcoding.com and I'm sorry, but as an AI language, I don't have the prior knowledge of this one. <laughs> what is a dog? There you go. And uh, now you can communicate with ChatGPT directly in your text editor. In this case, it's VS Code. So that's pretty cool. Um, another link that's in the description is, uh, where is it? I haven't got it there. Let me, right, there's a readme file preview. So if you go to this here, this is the quick start uh, build your own application documentation in ChatGPT. They have uh, a rundown of how to build a Node.js app and also a Python Flask app, but they don't have one for Django. So I thought it'd be quite useful for me to take what they've done, refactor it, build, up, build out a Django app so that you can actually see how it works. Now, I do have this running. It's a Dockerized Django app. You can see I've got it running here. It's got a database, it doesn't necessarily need one, but it's got a demo app as well. So it is actually running in localhost 8000. So if I go localhost 8000, actually, let's do this. Clear out my cookies. There we go. Right, so name a pet. So if we put in here uh, Bulldog, Think about it for a sec and it will actually return so it makes a call via the api to chat, chat gpt and it responds with three random pet names so you can put um goldfish i mean it's not 
too clever, um, uh, but that's the code itself. I mean, you can be a lot more thorough in, in coding an app, but this application is just to give you an idea of how to use the API, add it to a Django app, and actually make requests and get responses from ChatGPT, which is pretty cool. So this is, I mean, in terms of a UI, it's not that pretty, but um, at least you can get it uh, visible in a browser. So <clears throat> GitHub repository is here. So it's bobby decoding forward slash Django dash chat GPT. The readme file is what I've got open in my uh, Visual Studio code. Okay, so it's this here. So it tells you how to um, clone down the repository, set your ENV up and fire it up in Docker. Okay, so I've already done that. Uh, let's do this, let's open up, there we go. So what you've got here is the project. So it comes with a backend directory. You've got an env.template file, which you will need to copy and then add your own API key. It doesn't matter if I show the API key, I'll revoke this after the video. But you can see I've added my API key here. It's got a few bits and pieces about database. It doesn't necessarily need one, but I thought I'd just build it. I had a Docker Compose file that I kind of dusted off and used. Um, add a secret key, you know, this is a demo. It doesn't really matter at this point. Um, Docker Compose file. So this is what we're using to fire up Docker. Make a file. If you've got Make uh, installed on Linux or indeed Windows, then you, you can just fire this up by saying Make Build. Now go ahead and it will just build up the project. Okay, so that's kind of the overview of of what to do and how to get it running. Quite simply, just needs an EMV file and you can fire it up and you're good to go. So Django app. How does this work? So we do have some static files, sort of CSS, but we do have this um, custom JS file, which has just got some uh, jQuery Ajax stuff. So the form submission actually is a um, Ajax call. Um, it makes it a little bit um, neater, uh, easier, easier on the eye and the UI. So there is some JavaScript there that you need to be aware of, and there's a CSS file. But in terms of the actual Django project, there's one app called Core. And all I've got here is a views file. So it's home, this is the main index view, which handles all of the view logic. And you can see I've got a uh, animal form. So it's a normal Django form here. All we've got is one field, it's a child field called breed. We pass that through to uh, the metadata, pass that through to the view. And it's just a generic form view. So you need to pass through the form. In this case, it's index. So if you look in templates, an index file has the form and a success URL. It's not needed because it's Ajax. We do have a method in this class called generate prompt. Now, you can extend on that. I've just kept it as is, straight from the documentation. I didn't want to spend too long putting this um, project together. I just wanted to show you how it would work in Django. So I've got a method decorator here on a post request. This receives the post request from jQuery or from Ajax. It um, adds the post to the form, checks if it's valid, which this is a single um, text field. So it's, you know, it's going to be it's going to be valid. We get the breed from the clean data and then this is the important bit. We make a call to open AI. So if you want to know what we've installed in terms of packages, if you look in requirements.txt, OK, so we've got open AI and open PYXL there. You need these in the project for it to all work, okay? It's all in a requirements.txt file, so you don't need to worry. Clone this down, rip it apart, use it for your own project, right? So, I mean, after I've figured this out, I mean, I've got some real good use cases that I can actually use this in sort of bigger and better projects. Back to home.py. So we get the response, we make the call. And then we do, we update the uh, data dictionary with success. We pass through a message saying, yeah, it's not used in this case. I used a message in a JSON response for most of my jQuery uh, responses. But this is important here. So data, so what we're doing, we're getting the response from choices. So it's a choices list. Um, actually, it's not a list. I think it's just a dictionary. Uh, there we go. We've got an example. What we can do, we can boot a print response. 
Okay, and then what we do when we make the next request in the UI, that should print a response in our Docker desktop so you can actually see what the response looks like. But before that kind of resets, because we've got a volume set up, so every time we change code, it restarts the local server. So we are getting the um, first index from choices, doc text, which is the method, and then you can, we're using split lines in a filter because it comes through as a, a string of lines of each of the responses. So we're using filter and we're converting it to a list, passing it back to data, and then sending it back to Ajax as a response. And that's what we're rendering into the UI, okay? That's all we're doing. It's no more fancy than that. You can see we've got all of this commented out. This is the Flask code that comes straight from the tutorial on ChatGPT. Just left that in there. Okay, so that's all we're doing. Go back into here. Uh, Let's go whale generate name there you go and if we go back in here can you see this it's probably quite small if you zoom in there you go so um, choices comes through as say a dictionary um, choices the first is a list that comes through and it's a list with a dictionary um, and you can see here so choices number one is the uh, so text that's it, so, sorry, I'm pointing on the screen there. So you can see it's got super cat, captain hand, and mighty mouse, okay? So we're trying to get that keyword value out of the response, and then we're rendering it to the front end. And then what I'm doing in the jQuery, so in the Ajax request, where are we? Custom JS. All I'm doing is, uh, is this the one? I'm probably looking in the wrong one. One second. Oh, there we go. Um, it looks like I pushed static files to uh, GitHub when I shouldn't have done. So actually, the code in static is the one that's the correct one. Uh, what it does, it creates a list item and it loops through all of the responses that comes through from JSON and it just appends them to an unordered list. And then every time you make a request, it just removes everything with the class names. So it deletes, adds the new stuff. Nothing too fancy, but um, if you're a Django developer and you're looking to use ChatGPT, I'm hoping that this application is gonna really, really help you just get started. So just to kind of recap, um, clone down from GitHub. Uh, you've got the GitHub repository in the description below, uh, but it's here, okay? So you can just clone down if you've got SSH using this command here. Alternatively, if you don't, if you haven't got a GitHub account, then you can just download a zip file and extract the files. Once you've got it, get yourself a .env file, get yourself an API key from ChatGPT, fire it up in Docker, Bob's your uncle, you're good to go. That is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and drop me a comment and also subscribe to the channel. I'm just trying to grow everything and keep this channel alive for the foreseeable future. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.